the skin today. Uh, please check once again if the slides are moving, if the screen is visible, and if I am clearly audible. Okay. So, all right. So cutaneous lesions can be part of a primary dermatological disorder and this in addition can have systemic manifestations. On the other hand, a primary systemic disorder can be preceded or accompanied by cutaneous lesions, which therefore form an important clue to its diagnosis. So just as we know that a full physical examination should be part of a full dermatological assessment, it is also important to examine the skin in every patient who presents with a systemic problem. So first we'll be discussing dis disorders of the endocrine system and their cutaneous manifestations. Most important amongst these is probably diabetes mellitus because of the fact that it has several cutaneous manifestations and these can be classified based on the underlying pathophysiology. So uh, vascular damage underlies the diabetic ulcer, gangrene, which can be dry or wet, rubiosis, and diabetic dermopathy. Neurological damage underlies impaired sweating and trophic ulcers. And as we all know, diabetics have an increased risk of developing infections, which can be bacterial or fungal. And there's a strong association with hyperlipidemia and obesity, which can have cutaneous manifestations such as acanthosis nigricans, acrocodons, and eruptive xanthomas. So these are few important manifestations. First is the diabetic bulla, which are nothing but tense non-inflammatory bullae on the lower extremities. Diabetic chiroarthropathy, which results in flexure contractures and uh, the sign, which is known as the prayer sign, which is basically the inability to approximate the palmar surfaces of the hands. Next is diabetic dermopathy, which presents as brown atrophic macules and patches on the legs. Necrobiasis lipoidica, which presents with yellow atrophic patches. And this can have a reddish brown rim, which indicates the disease activity. Acquired perforating dermatosis, which present as keratotic papules, uh, mainly on the extremities and scleridema, which presents as erythematous induration of the upper back. And uh, so this is your prayer sign, which is the inability to approximate the palmar surfaces of the hands and fingers, and it results because of flexion contractures. The so this image shows the diabetic bulla, which generally develop on the shin and the lower extremities and are non-inflammatory in nature. Diabetic dermopathy, which presents as red-brown atrophic macules. And necrobiasis lipoidica, which presents as a reddish-brown plaque, which can have an erythematous margin indicating the disease activity. So acanthosis nigricans present generally over the flexure surfaces as uh, hyperpigmented velvety plaques and overlying are these small soft papules which are acrocodons. Then this is what eruptive xanthomas look like. The orange color is characteristic and this presents as slightly shiny papules. Next we come to the met metabolic syndrome also known as syndrome X. You must have studied the criteria for the scene. So Elevated waist circumference, high triglycerides, reduced HDL, and an elevated blood pressure, as well as an elevated fasting blood glucose, are the diagnostic uh, uh, criteria. So clinically, uh, it presents as central obesity, hypertension, dyslipidemia, and type 2 diabetes, and almost all patients have associated insulin resistance. From the skin point of view, there's an association with polycystic ovarian syndrome, and uh, that can manifest as acanthosis nigricans, acne vulgaris, and hirsutism. And there is also a strong association with psoriasis vulgaris. So metabolic syndrome can have all of these cutaneous manifestations. Next, we come to the thyroid disorders, which are very important from the skin point of view. So uh, in case of hyperthyroidism, the skin is going to be fine, velvety smooth. It's going to be warm and moist due to the increased sweating. And the there, there, there can be hyperpigmentation, which can be both localized or generalized. There's going, there can be pruritus, pretable myxedema, 
thyroid acropathy both these are very important and we'll just be discussing them in a, in greater detail then they can be associated urticaria dermatographism and an increased incidence of vitiligo hair are going to be fine and thin and the uh, diffuse alopecia can be associated and there's also an increased incidence of alopecia areata so vitiligo and alopecia areata both are associated with thyroid disorders nails can have onycholysis coelomachia or flattening or spoon shaped nails and clubbing which which is associated with thyroid atropathy so when we come to hypothyroidism we find that the skin is dry rough coarse almost opposite to what it was in case of hyperthyroidism it's cold and pale uh, there is, the skin is boggy and edematous which uh, is because of myxedema and the skin can have a yellowish discoloration as a result of keratinemia and uh, then other cutaneous changes include uh, there is an association with acquired ichthyosis and palmoplantar keratoderma and uh, xanthoma something that we just saw and here also you find an increased incidence of both vitiligo as well as alopecia areata other hair changes include uh, dull and coarse hair and slow growth of hair and alopecia of the lateral one third of the eyebrows which is nothing but madarosis the nails are thin brittle and there's a slow growth of nails so similar changes in the hair and nails and rarely you can find onycholysis so next we come to pretable myxedema also known as thyroid dermopathy this refers to localized lesions of the skin resulting from the deposition of hyaluronic acid usually as a component of thyroid disease and this is often confined to the pretable area although it may occur anywhere on the skin and it occurs in almost up to 5% of patients with graves disease but has also been reported with hashimoto thyroiditis or primary hypothyroidism so uh, the basic mechanism is that thyroid uh, hormones tend to influence prostaglandin metabolism and alter the synthesis and uh, degradation of glycosaminoglycans next is thyroid acropathy which occurs in up to 1% of the patients with graves disease and this is clinically characterized by clubbing periosteal proliferation of these shafts of the phalanges and other distal long bones and swelling of the soft tissues overlying the affected bony structures so acropathy tends to follow dermopathy and what is important is that both these are markers of severe ophthalmopathy so whenever you see these clinically the patient needs to be evaluated for uh, eye involvement okay so next is cushing syndrome Uh, there is going to be an altered subcutaneous fat distribution resulting in moon facies buffalo hump and mat stick limbs which are which is because of reduced fat in the arms and legs there can be skin atrophy which can be global or it when localized it is going to lead to the production of striae which have a typical purplish appearance there can be cutaneous fragility and purpura with minor trauma all of this is because of atrophy then there's an increased risk of cutaneous infections such as fungal infections including vitreous versicolor dermatophytosis and candidiasis and there can be corticosteroid related acne and hirsutism <coughs> so another important entity is addison's disease the most prominent cutaneous change is hyperpigmentation because of msh like effect due to the secretion of acth this is melanocyte stimulating hormone so uh this is diffuse with accentuation in the sun exposed areas and the uh, palmar creases the axilla perineum nipples and already pigmented sites will become more pigmented so there there's going to be an accentuation of pigmentation in the already pigmented sites and uh, the mucous membrane hair and nails can also be uncommonly involved next we come to disorders of the hepatobiliary system so we can have manifestations both as part of acute liver diseases and also chronic liver diseases in case of acute liver diseases hepatitis a uh, uh, the cutaneous manifestations in the acute stages can include uh, jaundice and development of exanthematous eruptions and when chronic they can be associated purpura or urticaria in case of hepatitis b up to 30% patients present with a serum sickness like disease and uh, so an important association is with polyarthritis nodosa and other 
uh, uncommon associations include acute urticaria, lichen planus, erythema multiforme, and even hepatitis B vaccination can cause exacerbation of any of the above diseases. Then an important association with hepatitis C is necrolytic acral erythema and cryoglobulinemia. And uh, then these are also certain uncommon ones such as porphyria, cutinia, tarda, lichen planus, and polyarthritis nodosa. This is what your necrolytic acral erythema looks like. These are bilateral, symmetrical, well demarcated, dusky plaques, and uh, they are surrounded by a typical erythematous margin. So the underlying mechanism of the association between porphyria cutinea tarda and hepatitis C is that oxidative stress from chronic hepatitis C infection of the hepatocytes affects the uroporphyrin decarboxylase enzyme and leads to porphyrin accumulation and bulla formation. So the changes in chronic liver disease are very important. Hyperestrogenism leads to vascular changes which can present as spinder, angiomas and telangiectasia, palmar erythema, caput medusae and bruising or purpura. Hair changes can be there which is basically in males you are going to have sparse axillary, pubic and pectoral hair and males tend to develop a female pubic hair pattern. Then they can be associated with gynecomastia and testicular atrophy. Pigmentary changes include jaundice, which leads to a yellowish discoloration, increased melanin pigmentation, male changes, which we'll be discussing in detail, and certain other associated lesions, such as xanthomas, porphyria cutinea tarda, vasculitis, uh, lichen planus, things, a uh, few of these things we've just discussed. So this is how a spider angioma looks like. There's a central arteriole surrounded by radiating capillaries and um, they can also be associated palmar erythema because of hyperestrogenism leading to vascular changes. So if we look at these changes from top to bottom, we find they can be alopecia, they can be jaundice, which can be generalized or uh, initially it is going to be seen over the sclera. Then spider nevi can be there, there can be a loss of body hair, dilated veins or caput medusae, palmar erythema, nail changes, testicular atrophy and gynecomastia. So uh, there can be a lot of different kinds of pigmentation that can be there. A yellowish pigmentation due to jaundice, which can be which can be generalized and initially may be seen over the mucous membranes and the sclera. Greenish because of cholestasis, and uh, this can lead to discoloration of the sweat and gingiva. A bronze or gray hue over the sun-exposed areas because of hemosiderin accumulation. Spotty hypomelanosis in relation to the spider angiomas over basically over the truncal region and the extremities and a muddy gray discoloration also known as melano melanosis cutis because of excess epidermal melanin and this again occurs over similar sites that were involved in addison's disease the areola peri uh, oral periorbital and palmar creases the already uh, the sites which are might be already pigmented so these are the three uh, important male changes and these are the three underlying important mechanisms, altered digital blood flow, soft tissue overgrowth and hypoalbuminemia. These all contribute to the nail changes. So the first important nail change is Terry's nails. This is a form of apparent leukonychia and it is characterized by ground glass opacification of almost the entire nail. Uh, and so it leads to obliteration of the lunula. And however, a narrow band of normal pink nail is visible at the distal border. And in case of Merkey's bands, you're going to find paired white bands over the nails. These are horizontal and clubbing. So it is important to uh, differentiate these changes with few other named nail changes. One is Lindsay's nails or half and half nails. These are basically found in your chronic kidney disease. And here the proximal part of the nail is white and the distal 20 to 60% of the nail is occupied by reddish brown, a uh, reddish brown band. So this is almost half and half. While here only the distal narrow pink part was remaining. The rest was, uh, rest had a ground glass opacification because of apparent leukonychia. Here this part of the nail uh, is only, uh, so the proximal part of the nail that is white is approximately 50%. That is why we call them half and half things. Another important uh, entity uh, which could be confused or also because it's a name entity, 
is the yellow nail syndrome and this consists of a triad of deformed yellow nails lymphedema and pleural effusion so this is associated with respiratory diseases so terry's nails murky's bands with liver disease lindsay's nails also known as half and half nails with chronic kidney disease and the yellow nail syndrome associated with respiratory disorders so next we come to pruritus as part of chronic liver disease this is the most common uh, symptom associated with liver disease and it is common in condition associated with cholestasis it is severe it is acral in nature nocturnal and it is increased by tight clothing so these are some of the important underlying mechanisms bile salts release of undefined pruritogens from the liver in the presence of cholestasis a role of endogenous opioids and steroid metabolites next we come to renal diseases the cutaneous manifestations in this case are primarily encountered in patients with chronic renal, renal failure uh, and in case of acute renal failure there are two important cutaneous changes one is edema and the other is uremic frost so this uremic frost results from the eccrine deposition of urea crystals on the skin surface of individuals with severe uremia and nowadays it is rare because of the wide availability of acute hemodialysis so uh, these are the cutaneous changes of end stage renal disease the a patient has a pale or sallow appearance because of anemia of chronic disease there can be association with acquired ichthyosis and the cause here is uh, relatively unknown and uh, there uh, there is associated pruritus because of increase in tissue mass cells acquired perforating dermatosis which presents as keratotic papules and we'd also seen this associated with diabetes and this uh, is related to pruritus pseudo porphyria and uh, this is said to be associated with hemodialysis and aluminum hydroxide which is used has been implicated and then you can have calciphylaxis we'll just see how this looks like this is because of increased calcium and uh, phosphate and um, then uremic frost which is rarely seen now so the cause of calciphylaxis remains obscure and it is basically related to abnormal calcium and phosphate homeostasis and hyperparathyroidism which results uh, due to the chronic renal failure so the early lesions appear as you know non specific bilaceous mottling or they can look like levodopa reticularis or they can just present as erythematous papules plaques and nodules however later on they have a very typical stellate configuration so the star shaped stellate configuration and uh, these are purpuric with central necrosis then you can have what is known as nephrogenic systemic fibrosis these are woody indurated plaque which are more common on the extremities and they limit the motion of the joints and this is associated with a pudy orange appearance so association is with chronic renal failure and patients who are on dialysis renal transplant recipients and rarely in case of acute renal failure it has also been linked to administration of gadolinium containing contrast media so these are some of the conditions genetic conditions which can have renal manifestations and have typical cutaneous findings so we will just be going over few important ones so you have the tuberous sclerosis complex so facial angiofibromas which typically uh, appear at puberty and uh, these are present uh, near around the nose area the nasolabial folds ash leaf macules which are hypopigmented a shagreen patch which is a collagenoma and it is a, a plaque which is almost skin colored and periangle or subangle fibromas so the renal abnormality in this case are renal hematomas and there's an association with polycystic kidney disease fabry disease so the lesions are what are known as angiokeratomas they are reddish uh, papules and they can have a slightly uh, reddish black appearance at times and association again is with renal failure nail patella syndrome which is associated with hypoplasia of the nails and triangular lunule and um, then these are some of the inflammatory or autoimmune conditions with renal abnormalities primarily uh, there is uh, glomerulonephritis in most of them and however the cutaneous manifestations can differ uh, so most of them which are uh, basically vasculitis wegner's granulomatosis cutaneous small vessel vasculitis henock schonlen purpura are all going to present with palpable purpura these are all forms of small vessel vasculitis then you can have polyarteritis nodosa which is a medium vessel vasculitis and can present with nodules and levodopa reticularis 
then other important and common entities are SLE systemic lupus erythematosus which presents with a typical malar rash and uh, lesions of cutaneous lupus erythematosus which can be of various types photosensitivity diffuse alopecia which is also known as lupus hair and lesions uh, suggestive of vasculitis then scleroderma or systemic sclerosis is going to have binding down of skin or sclerosis and Raynaud's phenomenon and sometimes there can be pigmentary changes as well association as with malignant hypertension then sarcoidosis can have uh, variable skin manifestations ranging from papules nodules to plaques next we come to disorders of the gi tract and the cutaneous manifestations so uh, so first we will be discussing disorders which have a vascular etiology so we have osler weber rendu disease so the gi lesion is a telangiectasia and the skin lesion also is a telangiectasia then you have the blue rubber bleb nevus syndrome and again you have hemangioma both as the gi lesion and the skin lesion pseudoxanthoma elasticum and uh, so in the GA tract, you have calcification of the visceral arteries and the cutaneous manifestations include yellow papules and plaques leading to a cobblestone appearance. The Ehlers-Danlos syndrome and this leads to uh, defective uh, collagen and fragile vessels and uh, cutaneous manifestations are include hyperelasticity of skin and joints. So here we can see the hyperelasticity of skin and joints and uh, the typical telangiectasia in case of osler weber rendu disease. Next, we have uh, conditions which manifest with polyposis as the GI lesion. You have neurofibromatosis and uh, we'll just be seeing the skin manifestations in this case, which are very important. Then you have Cronkite Canada syndrome, which uh, the skin manifestations here include alopecia, nail changes, diffuse hyperpigmentation, Gardner syndrome, syndrome which has uh, uh, you know multiple lesions such as lipoma, epidermoid cyst, Cowden syndrome again which can have lipomas, and Pugh Schreger syndrome which has typical pigmentation on the lips, perioral, and the fingertip region. So these are the important cutaneous manifestations of neurofibromatosis. You can have development of neurofibromas, which are hamartomas, cafe olemacules, lish nodules, and these are asymptomatic. They do not lead to any sort of vision loss and axillary freckling. Then Cowden syndrome is associated with trichelinomas. These are hamartomas of the hair follicles, and these present like these umbilicated papules. Then pute sugar syndrome, which has typical perioral and acral pigmentation. Next, uh, there are certain conditions which uh, have a vasculitic origin and the GI lesion again is a type of vasculitis and skin lesions uh, can be palpable purpura in case of small vessel vasculitis, levodo reticularis, when there's involvement of medium vessels. And Digo's disease is basically a vasculopathy and it can present with white atrophic papules. Then neoplasms, GI tumors, uh, these can basically have manifestations in the skin because of metastasis or because of paraneoplastic uh, manifestations and Carposi sarcoma, which can lead to development of Carposi sarcoma of the GI tract and similar manifestations in the skin. So this is how your palpable purpura looks like in case of vasculitis. Next, we come to inflammatory bowel disease. It can have several cutaneous manifestations, and uh, this is how you can classify them. These are specific conditions which result from direct skin involvement, and this is mainly seen in Crohn's disease, reactive conditions which parallel the disease activity and are basically because of immune cross reactivity between the skin and gut. Associated conditions because, which are because of HLA predisposition or because of the chronic inflammation, and Fourth, which are complications of treatment of inflammatory bowel disease. So these are the specific conditions. So you can have anal tags, perianal abscesses, fissure, fistula, or the water can perineum. And uh, so this is how it is going to manifest. And uh, then you can have swelling of lips, cobblestone mucosa, oral ulcers. All of these are because of direct skin involvement as part of the disease process.
then these are the reactive lesions which parallel the disease activity you can have oral aphthous ulcers erythema nodosum which presents as tender erythematous nodules over the shins pyoderma gangrenosum which is a non healing large ulcer pyostomatitis vegetans which presents as these small uh, pustules and generally over the mucosal surfaces and sweet syndrome which has urticarial plaques with with surmounting papillo vesicle generally on the trunk region so these are the conditions mainly associated with ulcerative colitis you have pyoderma gangrenosum sweet syndrome pyodermatitis pyostomatitis syndrome and these few uncommon ones such as polyarthritis nodosa you know chondrin purpura and uh, the small vessel vasculitis then crohn's disease the association is with erythema nodosum psoriasis and aphthous ulcer so these are the associated lesions uh, this is this can be because of hla predisposition or because of chronic inflammation epidermolysis bullosa acquisita vitiligo hydronitis operativa erythema multiform lichen planus bullous pemphigoid and there is an increased risk of squamous cell carcinoma in certain cases then the complications can be related to the stoma or they can be related to the disease process per se uh, related to stoma include irritation due to fecal leakage infections and contact dermatitis related to disease include parastomal pyoderma gangrenosum gangrenosum peristomal psoriasis or cutaneous crohn's disease next we come to disorders of the articular system and their cutaneous manifestations in rheumatoid arthritis uh, we all know there can be swan like deformity or the gutenaire's deformity then there are several skin manifestations and so you can have general manifestation manifestations which can be due to vasculitis because of neutrophil related disorders leg ulcers and certain miscellaneous ones we'll just be looking at the important ones so you can have rheumatoid nodules these are asymptomatic firm subcutaneous nodules interstitial granulomatous dermatosis with arthritis also known as uh, this acronym more commonly known by this acronym this presents with skin colored erythematous or violaceous papules or plaques generally on the truncal region rheumatoid neutrophilic dermatitis which presents with symmetrical tender erythematous nodules generally over the trunk and limbs vascular lesions leg ulcers and levodo reticularis so this is how your subcutaneous nodules look like these are skin color subcutaneous nodules they are often multiple and may be present in up to 20% patients with rheumatoid arthritis they are usually asymptomatic and found over the extensive surfaces such as elbows and knees which are sites of repetitive trauma so digital vasculitis can present as splinter hemorrhages has peri angle infarct as palpebral purpura or levodo reticularis and this is associated with high titers of rheumatoid factor or anti citrullinated pep peptides or anti ccp this is how your interstitial granulomatous dermatitis with arthritis looks like these are skin colored erythematous or violaceous papules linear bands or plaques which develop symmetrically on the lateral aspects of the trunk proximal thighs or axilla then rheumatoid neutrophilic dermatitis which are symmetrical tender erythematous nodules and urticaria like plaques over the trunk and limbs so that's about it if there are any questions please let me know okay so we have uh, two questions i'll be reading out the question as well as the answer so someone has asked if it's a small nail how are you going to differentiate between teri and lince's nails so like i was mentioning lince is a half and half nail the white and the pink part is almost going to be equivalent while in case of teri nails it is just going to be a very small band at the distal end which is pink in color rest of the entire nail is going to have a white appearance so the amount of the white part is going to vary then uh, okay so yes yellow nail can be part of bronchic tussis that's right it can be part of bronchic tussis it can be associated with lung carcinoma okay so differentials of levodo rash there can be many many differentials that's a topic for 
you know, discussion for another day. Uh, libido can have various manifestations. So you will have to read that in detail. Few that we discussed today and probably we can go over again is polyarteritis nodosa, which is a form of medium vessel vasculitis and other conditions which can have associated vasculitis like rheumatoid arthritis. It can also be a manifestation of SLE. Okay, common sites of, okay, so it's, uh, I think uh, someone has asked common sites of perforating keratoma. Well, this is not perforating keratoma. It is acquired perforating dermatosis. Common sites are the extremities. Okay, the upper and the lower limb. These are common sites of involvement in case of acquired perforating dermatosis. Okay, diabetic dermopathy. Uh, it is, uh, you can't really say that it is reversible. It is just that if the uh, glycemic index is controlled, patient is treated adequately, then it can be stopped at the stage that it is currently at. So someone has asked, if is it small vessel or medium vessel vasculitis? I don't know what you're referring to. Livido reticularis, if you're talking about, it is related to medium vessel vasculitis. Polyarthritis nodosa is a form of medium vessel vasculitis. And uh, your leukocytic cytoclastic vasculitis, Henoch, Shonen, Perfura, all of these are small vessel vasculitis. So if there are no more questions, uh, we'll end the lecture. Okay, so I think we have one more question. What is pinch perfura? So basically, this is seen in something which is known as cutaneous amyloidosis. There's deposit, amyloid deposition leading to vessel fragility. And, okay. So can we end the lecture if there are no more questions?